good God, money in the bank. This is Negative Alan Zadie here bringing you what went down in Money in the Bank of 2017. Good God, there's a lot to talk about this show. The first thing we want to talk about is the pre-show. Not much happened. Hype Bros beated the Colognes. Whoopee! I got that one right, but if, what if of course. I knew I was going to get that right anyway. The Colognes, what happened to them? They became a jobber again. Okay. Now let's go to the main show, which there is a lot of flaws we're going to talk about. First, the match, the pay-per-view began with the first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Now, it seems cool at first, but putting in that the, as the match that started off is just bad. Um, a lot, there was, like, this match, I said that this could be a big, but the best match of the night. No. This became the worst match of the night. Holy crap, I can't believe it. Not, not much going on except for the ending where Charlotte did a, I guess you could say, like a twisted bliss. It took out Natalia and Tamina. Then in the middle of the ring, you got Carmella trying to grab the briefcase. Becky Lynch delivering a powerbomb. And many people thought, including myself, that Becky Lynch would win. But then James Elford came in and knocked down. They just took the ladder and just hang it up and then just knocked down Becky Lynch. And then there was a lot of controversy going on with the ending of this match with James Elford grabbing the briefcase, dropping it to Carmella with the match. Then the referee were ringing the bell to say if this match was over. They do not know what to do now. And then James Elford grabbed the microphone announcing that Carmella is the winner. Nah. Then there's a lot going to be talking about tonight on SmackDown with the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match regarding what happened to the ending. Because Jesus Christ, there's a lot to talk about that match. But Carmella is your first ever Women's Money in the Bank ladder match winner. As you know, I predicted, so want to know. Now the second match on the card, the Usos versus the New Day. Now this was one of those... 50-50 bookings. Not much going on to this match. I mean, the Usos trying to work on Kofi Kingston's um, leg, the left leg, I think it was, where you know where Kofi got injured thanks to the revival, and then basically they were trying to focus on the entire match. There was not much insane moments going on to this match except for Kofi just got got up high and then pretended to be Willow, but then just twisted it. Like just a twisted fall. Basically, then they went for the midnight drive. One, two, and then the, and then Jimmy dragged out Jay, or Jimmy or Jay dragged out Jimmy. I don't know who it was. Then they grabbed. Then they they got out of the ring, and then they went. They got counted out. The new the, the new day did one, but the Usos won the championship. This is a 50-50 book, so one and a half. Zero? I got it right. Can't judge me. And uh, the next match, Lana versus Naomi. Oh my god, the internet. Just Lana. That's all I have to say. People only complain about Lana. Even me. I even said a lot, like... I, I thought I was going to get an erection, but it did not work for me. So, yeah, you think this was going to work? Nope. Um, the match was a little bit okay. Not the best match of the night, but then, then you know, um, you had uh, Mar you had Lana suplexing Naomi uh, with her legs onto the, onto the rope, which that is really legitimately bad to do because, you know, you don't know how much of a bump Naomi will get in. Then uh, Lana go for her hammerlock spine buster, which is a pretty unique move. And then Naomi just kicks out of it. That is unbelievable. Then the next thing you know, Carmella comes out and you know, with James Elford thinking that she's gonna cash it in. She teases, it's like, nah, not gonna cash it in now. So Carmella did not cash it in. Then, then Lana tried to go for another hammerlock. Then Naomi locked in her, her, her submission move, like, 
don't know what it's called. I'm sorry. She just wraps it in. Lana taps out. And then Carmella was teasing again to cash it in, but she ain't going to cash it out. And then we go to a backstage segment with, with Rizong, the fashion police, where they got the videotape footage on who was attacking the their vet their their offices. It was the ascension. I didn't care anyway. I just went to the bathroom in that match. Brizongo won anyway. I that match was an impromptu match. Christian Merkel, get that impromptu match in. Um, the next, then uh, we probably go to perhaps the best match of the night. Then we go to the best match of the night for me, which I can't believe it. That was the best match of the night involving Randy Orton and Jinder Mahal. Out of all people, that's the WWE champion, but they're getting it to view. They're programming Jim Durr with John Cena at SummerSlam. Oh, God. Um, Jinder Mahal, like Randy Orton, like in the middle, like in a little point of the match, Randy Orton went over the top rope, but then landed terrible. But I mean, he must have separated his left, his left leg, left knee, because holy crap, that was a scary bump that uh, Randy Orton took. Then Jinder was focusing more on Randy Orton's leg, which was kind of the main point of the match. And then at the end, and then, like, Randy Orton, then they, the commentators got confused. Like, Randy Orton did a superplex. I say that is wrong because Randy Orton never went over the top, never went to the top rope. He just gave a middle rope superplex. It's not an actual superplex. He just went to the middle rope. Then, you know, at the ending point of the match, you know, Randy Orton delivers an RKO to Jinder Mahal. One, two, and then the Singe brother, one of the Singe brother puts Jinder's foot on the rope. So making sure Jinder doesn't lose the championship. The referee had no, do, no idea what to do, but to kick them out or, you know, disqualify the match. Randy Orton was begging not to do it. And then, you know, out of confusion, and then the referee has decided to kick both the Singe brother out. And then they decided to go at, go and attack Bob Orton Sr., Bob Orton Jr., Randy Orton's father, in the barricade. Randy Orton gave in and did, basically did the backlash thing all over again. One of the Singe brothers again landed a terrible in the head, while the other one got RKO to the ring. Then while Randy Orton came back into the ring, Jinder Mahal kicked Orton in the left, Jinder kicked Orton in the left leg, then Jinder deliver his coquina that deliver his cobra clutch slam and Jinder Mahal wins the match then we get to a sec then after you know the match it had a little bit of segment and it was Maria and Mike Canellis okay they're good in TNA but why the Canellis is it copyright hmm I don't know but then um one thing that was assured about they were focusing on you know to have the positive of love Lucky, I don't need one because I'm not one of those morons. It's cool. But um, basically, then this basically screams out mid card for Mike Bennett and possibly Maria as well. Because people have speculated Maria to be the sixth woman in the fatal uh, five way women's fun in the bank ladder match. It did not work. So, very surprising that they decided to just to cut a promo. The music was. Yeah. It was that ever confusing. And then we go to the I think this is the main event. I don't think I predicted it on the right. Oh, it's the last one. Okay. Okay, and then we got the money in the bank ladder match ending it off. Kevin Owens probably was the unluckiest mm, superstar in the match due to the fact that, you know, since he doesn't love stepping on his face. He decided to go under the ladder, which would give him a total bad luck into this match. But I mean, a lot of bad luck. Um, during the entrances, Baron Corbin attacked Shinsuke Nakamura while Nakamura was doing an entrance. Take out Nakamura until Nakamura returned for the last seven minutes into the match, I think. Basically, the match would begin. Then all the guys were doing you know, their stuff. Yada, yada, yada. Sami Zayn. But Ke when Kevin Owens put a ladder, like, you know, open, but, you know, on the floor, Sami Zayn took advantage, put Kevin Owens at the top, slams him into the, la into the open down ladder, 
which Kevin Owen landed deadly, but I give props to Kevin. He had the balls to do the move, the maneuver. And basically, um, um, basically then the reporter that, you know, Kevin Owen's got a leg injury, but he is okay. So I'm happy that, you know, he is okay, but it's probably because of walking down the ladder. Then the next thing, you know, um, then a bunch of, then everybody was doing, you know, most of the maneuvers thing. Then they set up a bridge over, you know, the uh, Germans announced tape, the Spanish announced table or German, I forgot which one. Basically, to set it up over there so that way Kevin Owen can try to do a power bomb to AJ. It did not work. Then, you know, it just set it up over there. And then Baron Corbin grabs AJ Styles and delivers a choke slam, which is something you don't see a lot. Finally, Baron Corbin uh, does um, a choke slam, being a big man for himself. Then you had a little bit of an OMG moment when Sami Zayn just grabbed Kevin Owens and gave him a suplex under the apron. And the fans were chanting, holy shit, I, I don't know why they keep chanting that. Sami Zayn has done that many different times before. But they're the fans. Like, what the hell I know. Then the next thing, you know, then, you know, uh, then AJ probably had, you know, one of the scariest moments in the match where, you know, Dolph Zigg when Dolph Ziggler knocked down, you know, a ladder where AJ was hanging up. AJ was hanging on, you know, on the briefcase, but then AJ was starting to climb up into the, you know, the hook, so that way he doesn't fall, but he keeps falling just a little bit. He was trying to unhook the briefcase, but then, you know, his hand could not take it enough, and he took a scary-ass bump when he landed on his shoulders. He is okay, and he was able to continue on. Then Baron Corbin cleans out the match, then... Basically, Baron Corbin, he was going to climb the ladder. Shinsuke Nakamura's music hit. And basically go on and bury everybody. He did not bury Baron Corbin. Corbin got knocked out because of Ziggler, I think. Then Nakamura buries Ziggler. He takes him out of the match. He buries Sami Zayn, which is my heart pick. He buries Sami Zayn. Then he was going to Kevin Owens. Then he just shoved Kevin Owens, you know. Into the ladder, into the barricade, knocking him out of the match. Then he puts into the, the ladder, and then when he was to climb up, there was another superstar in the other side, and that was AJ Style recovering from that scary 15 foot bump he took. Was that 15 foot? I don't know. Uh, basically, then they both had a pretty good, interesting 1v1 match, despite being a multi man ladder match. Then, you know, when they both try to climb, on top of the ladder, Baron Corbin comes in and then pushes in of uh, both AJ and Shinsuke. Then he climbs up and then he claims to be Mr. Money in the Bank. I believe that was a very good choice and I even predicted it that Baron Corbin would win. And so overall, this pay-per-view, out of one out of five stars it gets for, you know, the pay-per-view itself, it gets a two out of five. Pretty bad for a SmackDown pay-per-view. Basically, this was not a you know a memorable moment. <laughs> yeah, the purpose, say Lana. Nope. It's just that there were not that many unique moments going on, as well with the money in the bank. Sure, you got the controversy with Carmella and James Ellsworth, and the cool one v one of AJ and Nakamura, but other else, there's not anything else memorable. God. <laughs> Good God, great balls of fire. Thank you so much for watching my Money in the Bank review. I know this is not, you know, intentional, but this is the best I could do. Thank you all for watching. Support my Patreon, and I'll talk to you all later.